I've been working on this project for three years to really get a sense of what this film really was like before it was heavily censored. I think it's our job to leave an accurate record of the films that were made and to preserve them in a way that is true to the filmmaker's original intent. We take a lot of thought and consideration into the films that we preserve. Right now, I'm working on a film from 1932 called Cock of the Air. The project began in 2007 with a donation of film elements. It's one of those bygone era films that has this wonderful age of innocence about it. There's all this sort of daring do amongst pilots, womanizing man, the lusty woman who chases him, eventually ending happily ever after, we hope. Talk of the Air came out in 1932, which was at the beginning of the production code. The studios were getting some feedback from religious groups, and as a result, Cock of the Air had many red flags. As I was winding through, I saw this woman wearing nothing but a suit of armor, and I realized, oh my gosh, we have the uncensored picture of Cock of the Air, but we were missing the soundtrack of the censored material. A different kind. And that was a song. There's restoration and then there's recreation. We had to recreate the sound from scratch. This has to be one of the first instances of recreating dialogue throughout a feature film. The goal is really just to provide the audience with the experience of those censored scenes. But there is this problem. We don't have the audio, the soundtrack, the dialogue of these performances. So what is the best approach to recreate, potentially, this material? What if we hire contemporary actors to speak the lines in the spirit of the original performances? And that's what we did. This is going to be a song, see? <laughs> that's the better one. Good, great. My first reaction was I could not believe that a movie called Cock of the Air had actually ever been made and certainly not in that period, and certainly not by sober people. Okay, let's do it again, let's do it again. In the moonlight, there's something that looks like love that isn't quite it. I'm replacing dialogue that was heavily censored that is forever lost. I think it's important that we preserve every piece of film that we have. There's something really amazing about putting your voice into somebody else's body. And what I found today was I was actually not wanting it to stop. She's like deliciously seductive at that point, yeah, yeah. There's a wonderful naivety and innocence about it and, and a sort of spring in the step of the performances. Part of the challenge is the quality of the film in terms of seeing the lip flap, that's hard for the engineer and for the actor performing, but also the, just the pace. I, I wish I'd been an actor back I then. Know. It was so easy. <laughs> So much easier. Recording these voices is different from a traditional ADR session because the actors don't have a reference of how they originally performed and they're performing someone else's voice. You're always looking for physical signals from the character on screen to see if you can match that and merge them together. So you try and make it as seamless as possible. I've only stepped in and replaced my own dialogue, which is much easier. <laughs> What's really hard about this is that usually you have the production version of your performance, so you can sort of follow that intonation. You see, it encourages foreign relations. You live alone. Officially. You also have the added uh, difficulty of trying to match old sound. Old films tend to have optical noise, which is just a bed of white noise. And then we played around with the color of the voices. We have to eliminate some of the low frequencies and high frequencies to make it match the old film. And we add in a little bit of distortion to try to match it in as well. The music was especially difficult because the scenes were cut out. We didn't have the music, so we had to recreate it. And I decided, hey, I'll take on a challenge and I'll record it. I would. It was so exciting for me to finally hear these lines for the first time. It's just a great look back to a bygone time that was a little more joyful, perhaps. I would hope that the filmmakers, if they saw this recreation, 
would be happy with it. Just looking through the production code files and seeing how hard Howard Hughes fought to keep the uncensored version out there and then ultimately had to relent and take out a lot of material. I would hope that he would be pleased that audiences are seeing the version of Hawk of the Air that he intended audiences to see. To see it now in its full glory, it's very exciting and I can't wait for audiences to enjoy it as well.